The Commonwealth Games are currently underway in the city of Birmingham in the United Kingdom. Some 72 countries and territories are competing in a whole array of sports, similar to the Olympics. As always, they haven't been without their share of news and controversy. One particular team's coaches have been denied entry to the United Kingdom, but these visa issues won't stop the talented gymnasts from doing their best. Let's take a look at what really happened. First, Team Malaysia's Russian coaches didn't get their visa for the United Kingdom. It goes without saying that athletes need their coaches on the sidelines of their big competitions, but it seems like the Malaysian team of gymnasts at the Commonwealth Games won't have their coaches with them in Birmingham. The team just might be on its own due to the political tension between the UK and Russia. Turns out that two of their rhythmic gymnast coaches are Russian, and this has led the team to being barred from entering the United Kingdom. The Malaysian Youth and Sports Minister Datuk Seri Ahmad Faisal Azumu said that visa issues of both coaches might have been affected by entry restrictions put in place by the UK government on Russian citizens after the Russia-Ukraine conflict began a few months ago on the 24th of February. Coaches Yulia Ivanova and Lydia Legotina are the ones affected by the entry restrictions. The development has come as a bit of a stinger to the Malaysian management. Earlier, there were reports that the Russian coach's visa process had run into a bit of a snag. It seems that the Malaysian contingent's management had already fulfilled all the registration processes as required by the organizers. In fact, they had even submitted a letter of appeal to the president of the Commonwealth Games Federation to help them secure speedy visa approvals for the coaches. But did Malaysia have a backup plan? The quick answer is yes. In the case that the letter of appeal was rejected, the Malaysian management had a way out. Afrita Ariani, honorary secretary of the Malaysian Gymnastics Federation and the local coach Lim Wen Chian, will be flying out to Birmingham in order to manage the Malaysian national team. The backup team will be traveling to the games and will be holding discussions with the panel of coaches on the management of national gymnastics team. That said, Nazril was pretty confident that the absence of these coaches will not affect the gymnastics performance. They were aiming for gold and so far they feel confident about it. The three national rhythmic gymnasts are Koi Si Yan, Ng Jo E, and Iza Amzong, and they have been receiving intensive training in Belarus and will be headed to Birmingham for Minsk. While this is definitely something that could disturb the team in their performance, it seems like Malaysians have no choice but to plan B it into action. We're pretty sure their coaches will be watching their performance just as closely on television as they would in person. But does Team Malaysia have a good shot at Commonwealth Gold? Team manager Be Gi Chen thinks so, and for good reason. In the last games in 2018 on the Gold Coast of Australia, the rhythmic gymnastics team returned home with one gold, three silvers, and three bronze. This time around, two of the three medal winners from 2018 are still on the team, and the nation's hopes are pinned on them to deliver at least one gold medal. However, the gold member from the 2018 games, Amy Kwan, has retired from the sport. And this year's team includes the winner of the medals from the last games, Koi Sien Yan, and but many are also curious about how Iza Amzan will do. The 21-year-old who has been doing gymnastics since the age of five and counts Amy Kwan as the inspiration behind her career is tipped to deliver some medals. In her latest appearance at the Commonwealth Games, she didn't win any. And to round off this trio, there's 16-year-old Ng Jo E, who will be making her Commonwealth Games debut in Birmingham. But it seems like the team is doing fantastic as Malaysia is out to top rhythmic gymnastics table. Team leader Koi Si Yen had said that she was more determined than ever before to lead her team to the top. Four years ago, that honor went to Cyprus, who won four of the six gold medals in the category. But Amy Kwan did deliver gold in the ribbon, which is an individual event. Now, Koi wants to step up a game as the most experienced team member and win the team gold. In a nod to her coaches who couldn't make it to the event, she said that following exactly what the coaches told them to do and being consistent at training really helped them build their routines. The 23 year old went on to say that one must never give up and remain positive all the time. She also mentioned that rhythmic gymnastics are a big part of the Malaysian sports tradition as it is offered in most schools. She also dropped a few hints about her routine. The hoop might be set to cha-cha music, but the one to really watch would be the ribbon routine. Australia and Canada will be Malaysia's main rivals in the team event. Let's see how it unfolds. And now, let's take a look at some more news from the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. First, Malaysia wins mixed team gold in badminton. In a reversal of what happened in the mixed team event four years ago, Malaysia beat India to clinch gold. Pirli Tan Kung Lee and Tin Ha Mer Lathran closed the deal with a women's doubles victory. It was a tough contest that went on for almost exactly four hours. Malaysia came out on top with a 3-1 victory. A corresponding win in the men's doubles event put them ahead of India, but then Pusarla Venkata Sindhu leveled the score for India in a tough 2-0 women's single match that she won. But the Malaysia-India shuttling wasn't over just yet. Ng Zi Yong put Malaysia back in front of the men's singles event before the women's doubles finished the job to land the team a gold medal. So there was a lot of back and forth between the two teams to decide the lead. And for the team bronze medal, Singapore beat England 3-0. For this face-off was also repeated from the Gold Coast games where the two teams last faced each other. And this was the second time Singapore beat them with a 4-1 success in the group phase. Meanwhile, it turns out the Russian coaches weren't the only ones who had visa troubles. It looks like the Russian 
coaches of the Malaysian rhythmic gymnastic teams aren't the only ones who have run into visa troubles. Athletes from the Gambia still haven't received their UK visas and are currently stuck in France. Gina Bass, one of their star sprinters, has been training in Paris for over a year. She is one of the six athletes who are currently awaiting visas. The home office said that their applications were being processed. The other athletes include country's top male sprinters Abrima Kamara, Adama Jame, Alou Juf, and Sengan Jobe, as well as Abdu Rahman Kasi and competing in the judo martial arts event. Six members of the Indian women's cricket team also didn't receive their visas in time to travel with the rest of their teammates last week. This is the first time that India is sending a women's cricket team to the Commonwealth Games. It looks like there's some serious work backed up at the British Home Office. And in the pair of sports at the Games, England's Hannah Cockfort won gold in the 100-meter race. Hannah Cockfort struck gold in the T33-34 100-meter race. She was ahead of fellow English teammates Kari Endanganaga and Fabian Andre. Cockfort is an absolute champion with seven Paralympic titles to her name. This was her first time at the Commonwealth Games, and what a start. She took no prisoners as she set a new record, clocking in a time of 16.84 seconds. The 30-year-old athlete holds the world records for the 100, 200, 400, 800, and 1500 meters in her classification and the Paralympic records for 100, 200, 400, and 800. The women's T37-38 100 meters was won by proud Olivia Breen. She beat English favorite Sophie Hahn to take home the gold. New Zealand's Rhiannon Clark took the third place for bronze. In the men's T45-47 100 meters, the gold was picked up by England's Emmanuel Temiateo Oyinbo Coker, while the silver went to Australians Jaden Page and bronze to England's Ola Abedagun. The Commonwealth Games are actually one of the only major international events that have para sports fully integrated into their program. This means that both disabled and able-bodied athletes compete alongside each other with their medals combined in the same tally for their country. It's so great to see such an inclusive sporting event at a global event. And that's a wrap for this video. Do you think that performance of the Malaysian gymnasts will be affected by the absence of their coaches? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.